Good day once again, great tens, and uh, we are back uh, with uh, circuits, right? We are doing electric circuits. So we're, we've already started on um, uh, resistors and series. If you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family and that uh, obviously you are a member, okay, of uh, uh, the uncle's family. Right, so let's, um, I want to talk about a few things before we get started on a, a couple of examples. Right, so we've talked about a couple of symbols, right, we talked about, you know, having a cell and we said, you know, this once we've got a series of cells, in this case, uh, we call that a battery, right? Okay, so we know that this provides us, a battery provides us with electrical potential. And that once we've got electrical potential, then it causes current to flow, right? And current will always flow from, flow rather from the positive side uh, to the negative side of the cell. Right, now, uh, I want to introduce something else, right? We've got an, um, you know, one of the components uh, that we call a switch, right? Now, what does a switch do? And I want you to please understand this, right? Once we've got a switch, so an op open switch has got infinite resistance, right? So in this case, once you've got infinite resistance, so when a switch is open, okay, we say that it has infinite resistance. It means that it's got a resistance that is so big that it does not allow current to flow through, right? So there'll be no current that flows through when the switch is open, right? But what happens? The moment that we close a switch, right? So in this case, when we close that switch, then it allows the current to be able to flow. So once we close the switch, right? I want you to note in this case, it means that we've got uh, zero resistance. So that's an ideal switch, right? Uh, in real life, there is no such a thing, but it has zero resistance, okay? Uh, I should have actually written there at the top, uh, resistance, okay? Um, an open switch has got infinite resistance, while a closed switch has got zero resistance, and therefore it will, it will allow all of the current to be able to flow through it. Okay, right, so we're going to talk a little bit later on about, you know, uh, um, you know what we call a short circuit as well as, um, in this case, an open circuit as well, right? But um, remember we said we also have other components, right? But I'm going to talk right now about a voltmeter. So I'm going to introduce these, right? Now, the voltmeter that we're going to use, ladies and gents, um, in this case, an ideal voltmeter has got infinite resistance. Now, think about what we said about an, uh, um, you know, an open switch, right? We said once resistance is infinite, right, what happens? It means that there is zero current that flows through, right? So, a voltmeter will not allow current to flow through, right? So there's zero current over there, right? Now I'm going to tell you why that is important. So that is why you'll see in a circuit, once we put a voltmeter, we always put it in parallel, okay? We'll talk about this parallel stuff uh, later on, right? Even if I connect it to a, um, you know, to a resistance, in this case, I will always place the voltmeter there. Now I want you to note what happens uh, when I, I, I connect that um, that resistance, right? I mean, that voltmeter, rather. Okay, so let's call this V1. Let's call this V2. So what happens? Because an, a voltmeter has got zero resistance, right? So suppose we say there's current that is flowing, so there's all our charges. In this case, no amount of charge will go there. Why? Because in this case, uh, there is a voltmeter, right? And that voltmeter has got infinite resistance. So what happens? All of the charge will actually go through, uh, you know, our um, transmission lines or our conductors. And once again, when we get to this node, so a node is where you've got more than one conductor or one component uh, meeting at that point, right? So in this case, 
there will be no current. So no current goes through here. Why? Again, we've got a voltmeter in this case that has infinite resistance. So what happens? All the current still uh, in this case goes through, um, you know, uh, that line there. It will go through resistor R and it will go uh, all the way there back to your battery, right? So please, I want you to note there will be no current that goes through the voltmeter, okay? So that is very important. But we've got another component, and that component is what we call an emitter, all right? And of course, what does a voltmeter uh, uh, do? Uh, what it does is that it measures the voltage, right? Or it measures the potential difference across uh, two points, right? So it measures the potential difference, okay? Um, so, right, so let's talk about the emitter. So if we've got an emitter, right, an emitter once again has got zero resistance, okay? So it has zero resistance. So if it has zero resistance, what do we know? Well, in this case, it allows all the current to flow freely through it, right? So it allows current to flow, okay, uh, to flow, okay, through it, right, to flow through, right? So in this case, I want you to please always note, so when we connect an emitter, we will always connect an emitter in series, right? Why? Because we want that current that goes through the emitter to go through the resistance as well. Okay, right. So I want you to please note this. Okay, well, of course, it will depend where we connect that uh, emitter. Um, that is what will determine uh, where we connect uh, or rather the, the reading on that particular voltmeter. Okay, right. So what I would like for us to do, ladies and gents, is to take some, um, you know, examples all right, and look at how we will deal with resistances or rather resist resistors rather that are connected in series. All right, so let's look at our first example, right? So we're given there a circuit, right? So we can see we've got our circuit there. They say two cells are connected to a circuit as shown in the diagram below. They say the, volt the voltmeter reading uh, is 4 volts and the emitter reading is 1.5 amperes, right? They say the resistance R2 um, is 3 ohms, right? Now, let's start here, right? I think the best thing to always, you know, uh, start with when it comes to any circuit, try and populate as much information as possible Right, so we know there that the emitter reading they said is 1.5 amperes. Okay, and they told us that the voltmeter reading here is 4 volts, right? So that's very important for us to note um, in this case, right? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking or tracing the current path, right? Uh, I, I always like doing that so that we are able to see clearly what happens in the circuit. So our switch is closed. So that means that we're going to start on the positive side, right? According to conventional current. So we know all the current flows in this case, right? To get to this node, is there any current that goes through the voltmeter? And the answer is no. So in this case, all of the electrons will pass through that resistor R1, right? Okay, so again, all the electrons that pass through R1, do you agree with me, would pass through R2, right? So the same current across R1 is the same current across R2, right? So what did we say? When we've got the same current passing across resistors, what do we say? Then we know they are connected in series, right? Please remember that uh, for the future. Right, so the same current in this case will pass through the emitter, okay? And of course, back into the negative part of the cell, okay? Or of the battery in this case, because we've got cells that are connected in series, right? So now, what does that say to us? 
Well, we know the current that went through the emitter, right? We know that it has a value of 1.5 amperes, right? So what does that mean? It means that the current that went through resistor R1 would be, well, you've guessed it, it also should be 1.5 amperes. Please remember that current is measured in amperes, right? And then what does that also mean? It means that the current that went through resistor R2 is also 1.5 amperes of current, okay? Right, and I know uh, when we're starting out with circuits, uh, it's very difficult to, you know, to know which one is current, which one is voltage, and so on. Um, remember we said current is the flow of electrons, the flow of charge, right, uh, in this case, right? So let's look at the question. Oh, by the way, before we even get to the questions, right, let's look at the voltmeter reading. Where is that voltmeter connected across? Note in this case that voltmeter is connected across R1. Can you see that? Okay, so remember our principle. We said we always use voltage with its corresponding resistance, right? So where is that voltmeter V reading across? It should be R1. So when we use Ohm's law, we're going to use that voltage only with its corresponding resistance, which is R1. I hope that makes sense, uh, ladies and gents, right? So let's now find, uh, answer the questions, right? So they say to us, calculate the resistance R1, all right? So remember, so we use our uh, Ohm's law table, right? So V is I times R. We're looking for resistance that, uh, this time. So this is going to be V over I, but not just any voltage. Uh, in this case, it must be with the corresponding resistance, right? So do we have the voltage across R1? Absolutely. It's four volts, right? And do we have the current that passes through R1? Absolutely. It's that 1.5 amperes, right? So for number one, we're going to say, well, we know that uh, R okay, or let's say R1, would be V divided by I, okay, which is our I total in this case, a total current. So as a result, that will be 4 volts divided by the value of the current there. Remember, we said that was 1.5, okay. So that's 4 divided by 1.5, ladies and gents. So that's 4 divided by 1.5, and that gives us 2.67, right? So that gives us 2.67 uh, uh, ohms, right? Um, in this case, right? So now uh, let's go to the second question. So we know now that the resistance R1 is 2.67 ohms, right? Now they say to us, calculate the potential difference across R2, okay? Now, do you agree with me that the potential difference, we've got the resistance, we've got the current there, so we can find what the potential difference is. Remember, potential difference is voltage. So voltage is equal to I multiplied by R. So that will be the current, the total current, and the resistance R2. V, in this case, sorry, uh, because we're looking for voltage, this is going to be I multiplied by R. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 1.5 amperes multiplied by the resistance R2 was given as 3 ohms. So that's multiplied by 3, right? And in this case, 3 times 1.5, that should give us 4.5 volts. Okay, right. So let's keep that in mind. So we've got the voltage uh, in this case, across the 3 ohm resistor. So I'll call it VR2. Okay, right. Let's go on to the third one. Okay, so we are going to say um, the EMF of the cell. So they want the EMF of the cell. Now, let me just quickly explain what we mean by the EMF of the cell, right? So we say the EMF of the cell is the total energy 
per unit charge, right? That is supplied by the battery or across the terminals of the battery, right? So in this case, what are we actually looking for? We are looking for the total voltage that is supplied by the battery. Now, we're going to talk about internal voltage uh, a little later on, um, you know, as you continue with circuits, uh, perhaps not in grade 10 as yet, uh, but in this case, uh, we'll talk about that um, as we proceed with circuits, right? But now we're looking for the EMF, which is the total voltage across the battery in this case, right? So uh, how would we get that? Now, remember, in this case, because our resistors are in series, we said they are voltage dividers, right? So the voltage across R2, right, which we got there, right? So what do we know? We know that the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across R2, right? If there were other resistors plus the voltage across the other resistors uh, in this case, so that would give us the total external voltage or in this case what we refer to as the emf uh, the word EM, or rather the acronym emf stands for electromotive force right uh, in this case unfortunately it's a it's a legacy term that we are left with uh, but uh, um, you know they actually thought that there was a force that was pushing electrons uh, in this case but uh, yeah, but, but we now know that it's electric, it's electric potential, right? Um, so now, so we're going to say, so it means that the EMF of the cell is going to be V plus VR2, okay? Right, I'm going to show you another way we could have done this. So we know um, our V was 4 volts. Our VR2 is 4.5 volts. Right. And in this case, that would give us 8.5 volts. Right. Now, another way we could have done this is we could have actually summed up the two resistors. Right. So if we took the two resistors and made them into one resistor. OK. So what would we have? We'd have the two resistors, which would be 2.67 plus 3, uh, 3, uh, uh, 3 ohms. Right. So that would be 5.67. Okay, so where do we get that? We'd say uh, 3 ohms plus 2.67, okay, which is R1 plus R2, okay, because they are in series, right? Now, remember, even if we take them and sum them, uh, sum them up, which current would pass through them, right, would pass through that resistor? It would be the total current, okay? Obviously, there's no other way that current can go. In this case, it would still be that total current in this case, right? So what we can do is we've got the volt, I mean, we've got the resistance, and we know the total current is 1.5. So we can say that the EMF of the cell, right, would be equal to I total times R external. We can say R series in this case. That would be 1.5 multiplied by 5.67 and in this case we can multiply those so that's 5.67 times 1.5 and in this case can you see we get 8.5 volts okay so we still get to that same answer which is 1.5 volts okay right so those were the two ways in which we can do that i hope that uh, you are following ladies and gents and we can see that uh, we did not deviate from what we had said uh, about resistors in series. Okay, right. And then, then uh, the next question, uh, question four, they say calculate the amount of heat that is released through the 3 ohm resistor in 2.5 minutes. Right. Please remember once they talk about heat, we're talking about energy in this case, right? So what are they saying to us? We are calculating uh, the energy that is released in this case by the 3 ohm resistor. Now remember, what did we say? We said energy would be equal to the charge, right, multiplied by the voltage, right? Or um, it, this comes from the equation V is equals to W over Q, right? And we're making W the subject of the formula, so in this case, W will be equal to V times Q, right? Okay, right. I hope that you're following. 
So um, now we want to know how much charge uh, passed through that voltage. Okay, right at that resistor, uh, uh, by the way, right? How much uh, uh, charge would have passed through there? But remember, we also know that charge is equal to I multiplied by T, right? Uh, remember, we called it our quit equation, right? So it's current multiplied by time. So in this case, I can simply say, okay, let me just uh, write this as V times Q. So I know that this would be V multiplied by Q is equal to IT. So this will give me VIT, okay? So uh, what is the voltage uh, across our, uh, um, our 3 ohm resistor? Right, so you remember we found the voltage here. We said that was 4.5 volts, right? So that was 4.5 volts, right? So we know the voltage there is 4.5 multiplied by the current that passes through there, which was 1.5, right? And multiplied by the time that, uh, you know, um, uh, that we were specified in the question and we're given 2.5 minutes now remember we said the time that we use must be in seconds right there are 60 seconds in a minute so we've got 2.5 minutes multiplied by those 60 seconds right so in this case let's find our answer quickly so that's going to be 4.5 times 1.5 multiplied by 2.5 2.5 times uh, 60, okay, right, and uh, what does that give us, okay, uh, it gives us a value of 1000 and, um, yeah, one, 112, right, uh, yeah, so I can see that my calculator is giving me uh, that in, uh, so uh, 25 divided by 2, that will be 12.5. So that would be 102, 101.5. And remember that energy is measured in joules. Okay, right. So that would be the answer that we get. Okay, right. So the last question here, right? What did they say? They said to us, calculate the amount of time it will take to allow 30 coulombs of charge to pass through R1. Okay. So we want to know the time and we are given the amount of charge in this case. So we know once again, which one, um, uh, you know, specifies or rather, which is the relationship between charge and time. We know Q is equal to I multiplied by T, or you can say I is equal to Q over T, right? But we know in this case, we're looking for 30 coulombs of charge, but how much current passes through R1, right? We know we had 1.5 amperes, right? So we want to know, in this case, what would be the time? Um, so that would be the uh, what we're looking for. So let's say divide that by 1.5, okay, right? So we'll say 30 uh, divided by... 1.5 okay so that gives us and uh, this would be 20 right so t is equal to 20 seconds right so we would get an answer of 20 seconds i hope that makes sense ladies and gents right so that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to this question all right so i want us to take just one more when it comes to resistors in series. All right, so we'll look at the second example. Right, so uh, they say to us in this diagram, uh, in the diagram below, okay, each cell has an EMF of two volts. Now, that's very important, ladies and gents, because what that simply means is that we are going to take each cell and look at how much EMF we will have in total, right? So remember, a cell is made up of this long and shorter 
uh, you know, um, a part of the stick, right? So how many cells do we have? We've got one, we've got two, three, four, and five, right? So it means that we've got five cells that gives us that give us two volts each. So what will we do? We'll say five, five cells, right? Multiply by two volts. Okay, so it means that in total, uh, we've got an EMF of 10 volts. So keep that in mind, right? Okay, right. So um, in this case, then they say to us, right, so we're looking at the cell. They say, what is the reading on A1 or on A rather, V1, V2 and V3 when switch S is open? Now, that's a very good question. So when switch S is open, please note that there is no current that is flowing through the external circuit, right? So what does that mean? It means that there's no, uh, the reading on A would be zero because there's no current. So A would be zero, okay? Um, but as well as V2 and V3, right? But V1 should actually give us a reading because remember, um, the battery in this case, so uh, V1 is just reading uh, across the terminals of the battery, right? Uh, in this case, so uh, V1 is connected across the battery, so it should give us the value of the EMF, which will be equal to 10 volts. V2, all right, there's no potential there because there's no current flowing through, so that would be zero volts as well as V3 should also give us uh, zero volts over there. So uh, A is zero amperes. There's no current that is flowing there. Right. Now, they say to us, now switch S is closed, right? So the moment we close switch S2, uh, I mean uh, switch S rather. So I want us to do that. So the moment we close that switch. Now, before we even go and look at the questions, I want us to look at what happens. So we know we've got the positive side of our battery, right? So we know the total current, right, will flow all the way across, right? Now, in this case, what happens when we get to this node? Is there any current that flows through, um, you know, that resistor there? I mean, uh, that flows through the emitter, I mean, the voltmeter? No, right? So all the current would go through that uh, resistor, uh, that uh, 1.5 ohm resistor, right? The total current flows through the 4 ohm resistor, right? As well as the total current flows through that emitter there. So that emitter will give us the total current, right? Again, when we get to this node, what happens? Is there any current that goes through the voltmeter? Again, absolutely not. Why? Because the voltmeter gives us uh, in this case, uh, has infinite resistance, so it does not allow current to flow through. So all of that current will flow through the 2.5 ohm resistor and back to the cell. Okay, right, back to the battery. Right, so what do we note? Right, the total current passes through, uh, in this case, the 1.5, the 4 ohms, as well as the 2.5 ohm resistor. So in this case, what that simply tells us is that uh, all of those resistors must be in series. Why again? Because the same current passes across all of them. So if we call that current I total, then we know that I total passes across all of them and therefore makes those resistors to be in series, right? Now, when you look at the voltage, right? So look at that. If we look at V2, for instance, um, we've already spoken uh, at length about V1. So V2, okay, uh, measures across, in this case, that um, voltmeter or, or that resistance, uh, that resistor, um, that 2.5 ohm resistor, right? Whereas if you look at V3, right, it measures across uh, the two resistors there, which is the 1.5 as well as the 4 ohm resistor, right? So remember the principle we always say, uh, you know, uh, when we use voltage, we use it with its corresponding resistance, right? So quickly, so they say to us, um, the first one, we're looking at 2.1. So they say calculate the total current 
uh, of the circuit okay so remember we start where we've got the most information and where did we have the most information we given the emf but what is our battery reading across or what is that voltage there it's the voltage across all your resistors combined isn't it so what we're going to do is that we're going to get the effective resistance okay of the circuit or in this case the equivalent resistance so i'm going to say rs if you don't mind uh, i'm going to call this r1 r2 and r3 for easy referencing right so that's going to be r1 plus r2 plus r3 okay so that would give us uh, that would be 1.5 plus 4 plus 2.5 so that's 1.5 plus 4 uh, plus 2.5 so that will give us uh, a total of 8 volts okay i mean 8 ohms that is uh, so our total resistance in this case is 8 ohms right so now we had the um we were given rather the emf of the cell so to get the total current remember that voltage is the voltage across all your resistors right so that will say so this will be v total or you can say v external divided by r external right so that will be 10 volts divided by 8 ohms um in this case right so that will uh, give us that will be 5 over 4 uh, which will give us 1.2 uh, okay right so we've got a current of um, uh, 1.2 amperes right so ladies and gents i want us to quickly note in this case remember we said whenever you take voltage it's with its corresponding resistance resistance right we use the same principle ohm's law v is equals to i times r right we're looking for current so we say v over r we were given the emf of the cell right um in this case to be 10 volts okay of the battery rather okay so um all right i see we skipped a number there uh, that was supposed to be 2.2 uh, they say to us we've got the reading on the emitter oh actually uh we said i i must have skipped the one that says calculate the total resistance of the circuit so that will be the first question there all right and so this one will be 2.2 which um just so that i make sure that i follow the numbering that's there that's actually 2.3 there okay right so let's go on to 2.4 i know there's a mistake in my numbering okay so uh the next question okay they say to us calculate the reading on v1 okay right now if we note v1 all right should be the reading across uh, our uh, the the reading on emf the emf reading rather so v1 should actually be just 10 volts there's no need to uh, measure that i mean to calculate that or you can just say this will be uh, 2 volts multiplied by 5 uh, cells and so that gives us 10 volts in total right so uh 2.5 i believe they say we should get the reading on v2 right i want you to note we said v2 measures across the um, r3 which is the 2.5 ohm resistance right now we know uh, the the current that passes through there right we said that current will be 1.2 amperes okay so we know v2 will be equal to i total multiplied by the resistance r3 so that will be 1.2 okay multiplied by 2.5 okay uh, so let's do that quickly so that's 1.2 times 2.5 Okay, we get a value of 3 volts. All right, so that's our value for V2. So 2.6, right? We're going, we're very quick about it. Now we're looking for the value of V3. Now note, right, once again, across V3, we said what is the corresponding resistance, 
right? It's both those resistors combined, isn't it? Okay, so if we're looking for the value of V3, again, we know which current is passing through there. It should still be the total current, but now those resistors are in series, so we can add them, right? Uh, 1.5 plus 4, right? Ohms should give us 5.5 ohms. So in this case, we're going to say, well, this is going to be V3. This will be I total multiplied by R, but in this case, it's going to be the combination of uh, R1 plus R2, uh, those two resistors there, right? So that will be 1.2 amperes multiplied by R1 is 1.5 and R2 uh, is 4 ohms, right? And so that gives us uh, 1.5 uh, multiplied, uh, sorry, that's 1.2 rather, uh, into 1.5 plus 4. Okay, so that gives us 6.6 .6 uh, volts. 6.6 .6 volts. All right. Now, um, just so that we note, uh, no man, something does not look correct there we had a total of 10 volts okay uh, did i actually calculate that correctly so that's 10 divided by 8 sorry that was supposed to be 1.25 i can see that uh, something is a little bit off there so that is supposed to be 1.25 amperes right uh, so this was supposed to be 1.25 multiplied by um, uh, R3, what was the value of R3? That was 2.5, okay? Apologies about that. So that would have given us 1.25 multiplied by 2.5. So that will give us 3.12 volts, okay? Right, and then... Uh, what we did there, this was supposed to be 1.25, okay? So let's say 1.25 multiplied by 5.5, and that should give us 6.88, and that makes a huge difference, okay? Right, so we get a value of 6.88 volts, okay? Right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Another way that we could have found the value of V3, right? Now remember that the value of V1 would be equal to V2 plus V3, isn't it? Okay, right? Um, in this case, we, we can say V1 would be equal to V2 plus V3, right? But we already know that V1 is 10 volts, right? We know that V2 is 3.12, and if we're looking for V3, in this case, so um, if we take that to the other side, it will be 10 minus 3.12. And I can assure you, you are going to get the same value, 6.88 volts. Okay, right. So please remember that in this case, when we take the sum of the voltages, right, it will give us the external voltage uh, in a series circuit. Right. And finally, they say to us, calculate the energy that is transferred to the 4 ohm resistor if 360 coulombs of charge flows through it. Okay, so remember, so when we're looking for energy, we're saying, okay, so work done, uh, that's going to be charge multiplied by the voltage or voltage multiplied by charge. We're given the charge to be 360 coulombs there, but in this case, remember, we're looking for uh, uh, you know the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor right so remember v3 is not the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor so we would have to get that voltage there but we know the current flowing through it right so we know that v is equal to i multiplied by r that would be 1.25 multiplied by 4 isn't it so I might as well just take that value there, right, which is the voltage. So that's 1.25 multiplied by 4, okay, and I will get the energy that is transferred, okay, so that will give me 
360 coulombs of charge multiplied by 1.25 multiplied by 4 and that will give me a thousand eight hundred so that will be a thousand eight hundred joules of energy okay right so i hope that made sense ladies and gents and this is where we are going to keep it of course the next time we look at circuits we're going to be looking at parallel resistors and of course uh, continuing with electric circuits otherwise from me for now i'll see you guys next time don't forget to subscribe and like and of course tell as many people as possible see you next time shop shop